First Luke chapter 1 verse 34 says the following. Then Mary said to the angel, how can this be since I do not know a man? She does not mean here that I have not met a man. She was already was engaged. This meaning I do not have a sexual relationship with the man because they were not married yet. And the angel answered and said to her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the highest will overshadow you. Therefore also that Holy One who is born will be called the Son of God. Now indeed Elizabeth your relative has also conceived a son in her old age and this is now the sixth month for her who was called barren for with God nothing will be impossible. Can someone say amen? amen. Then Mary said behold the maidservant of the Lord let it be to me according to your word and the angel departed her. Can somebody say amen? Someone said there's five stages to every dream and I'm just gonna quickly the first uh, remind you of the first stage is when you when you have thought of it a thought came a wish came a second stage is when you have sought it when you started to look for it when you started to put 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 efforts to seek for it you start to dream about it start to have a zeal for it then when you bought it you pay the price of going through challenges and difficulties to see the dream become a reality you got it when the dream becomes a reality and usually people that's when they stop they get rich or they get famous or they get successful but the last is the most important when you taught it when you teach the same thing to other people and they reproduce of what you did yourself. Somebody say amen. We must understand today we're going to talk about seeing our dreams become a reality. One of the reasons we want to talk about that because we have a big dream as a church and I know that individually we all have big dreams. And God is in the business and He is interested a lot more than we are to help those dreams become a reality. We must understand that we live in a world that is not very old. No matter of your view of creation or evolution, we all come to that agreement that there is a world that has been here before. And this world is superior to our world and this world created our world. The scripture says that things that are not seen are eternal and things that are seen are temporary. What that means is that everything you see has not been here forever and will not be here forever. Everything you see is not the most powerful but what you don't see is more important than what you see. The world we believe in is greater than the world we see. The world we see is a slave to the world we believe. The world we believe in, the world of the Holy Spirit, the world of the supernatural, the world we cannot see with our physical eyes but we can perceive with our heart, that world has been here before and that world will be after this earth and that world is superior and that world is here right now. It only cannot be seen with our physical eyes and that world can shift things and change things and our greatest task and desire is to come in contact and learn how to partner with that world. Can someone say amen? amen. When a little boy last year I remember was brought here who had asthma for was it six years? Six years since his birth. That is the world that you see. The doctors have given him the inhaler, the doctors have given him the medicine, the doctors have given him a prognosis and diagnosis and have given him a predicament. For the rest of his life this little boy is going to use the inhaler and this little boy will not live a normal crazy wild doing whatever you want to do life. He's going to be limited by his affliction. That is the world you see. That is the world that has its limits. But the parents believed in the world that has no asthma. Parents believed in the world where asthma is a little boy and the Holy Spirit is the king. And asthma doesn't tell what for the Holy Spirit what to do but Holy Spirit controls and changes things. And when they came in February of last year for that prayer, it was a curly hair, I still remember that image because I thought it was a girl. 
so when we were praying I said God bless her and then later on when the little girl came back God not only healed the boy but turns out I found out that it was a boy not a girl and so and when the father came back you know six months later and he testified he says ever since that prayer until it was that time that they came it was six months before this it was six years he says something has happened the asthma that was supposed to stay for the rest of his life stayed no longer this boy runs this boy doesn't use his, his inhaler he's completely fine and the doctor told him he's completely good with his breathing you may say what was that there is a world that is bigger than the world you see there is a world that created the world you see and our desire and our aim in life is to become a partner to connect yourself with the Holy Spirit who is supreme in this world sometimes our life can get hectic sometimes our life can get busy and our life can get over our head and when it gets that you always have to have this mental picture of Jesus walking on the water the very water you're sinking under the very world you're suppressed under the very world where lawyers and doctors and connections and your best efforts and all of your medicine and all of your vitamin and all of your gym membership and all of the good things that you have in your life it comes short and you're drowning trying to stay on the top at that very instant the Holy Spirit walks over the very things with your best efforts you are trying to stay on the top Peter was a professional swimmer Peter was a professional man at the sea he was not a rookie he was not an immature the sea to him it was his life he was a pro at it and drowning in it you may be pro in your world you may have a master's, you may have a bachelor's and you may have all of the education how to deal with people's problems and your own problems and you will find yourself grasping for air. That's how life is and at that very moment you must understand there is a world that walks over the things you're drowning in. And our desire is to connect with that world. Not only so we survive and we live 50 years happily after and me and my wife are still alive not only so that I will stay free from cancer until my old age and die having houses and cars not only so that I will be faithful to my spouse and that I will not find myself addicted not only that but so like the Bible says in Romans that we will reign in life through the gift of righteousness and the abundance of grace God doesn't just wants to pull you out and give you stronger arms to swim in this world. He wants to give you stronger wings to soar above it. Can someone say amen? There is a world we don't see. This world controls the world we see. There is a world you don't see. This world can change the world you do see. I remember we were praying for one girl who was deaf in Massachusetts in the beginning of the year. It was like, I think it was like second time that when I was traveling, I started seeing God heal people. And this girl, she couldn't hear in one ear. And when we prayed, and I remember, I typically don't put my hands over people's, on people's head, and especially on their ears. But at this particular one, I placed both of my hands and I held them there for maybe 45 seconds. It felt a little bit awkward. And I kept saying, Lord God, open her ears. But I was praying for God to open her spiritual ears. I didn't know she was deaf in one ear she couldn't hear and she had this pain and as I let my hands go she comes next night to testify and she said that very moment she said there was a click in my ear she says everything is completely gone she demonstrated she said I can hear completely what was that another world coming into our world there was nothing more significant about me than you it's that the Holy Spirit walks over the things we are drowning in. The Holy Spirit walks over the things we're struggling in. It's very easy for Him. And you may say, but God, you can't be. I'm a pro at this. I know this. I've had 25 failed relationships. I am pro at relationships. If you would be, you wouldn't have 25 failed relationships. God is pro. You're just an immature trying to figure life out. Can somebody say amen? 
and Holy Spirit is on our side and he will help us in Jesus name. We see the story today about Mary how Mary angel comes to Mary this was the Christmas story we just celebrated last week and he greets her and he tells her that you're about to become a mother of the greatest king the king of David, the king who's going to be the son of David that Israel's been waiting for and she says awesome until he tells her you're gonna have him before you get married and that's when she said that's not gonna that's not possible how is that even possible and he said it's simple if you agree with it if you open your mind to it Holy Spirit will do the rest the Holy Spirit will come he will touch your body and he will start doing something impossible and it will become possible she said after that it doesn't make sense I don't know how that could happen but let it be to me according to your word I want to want to share something today from this story of Mary a few things about this spiritual world I want you to write something in your notes when we open our mind to God's word we open our world to God's spirit when we open our mind to God's word we open our world to God's spirit what Mary did with an angel is she opened her mind to the ridiculous possibility that God can do something that didn't make sense in her mind and Jesus said through the angel he said that's enough the Holy Spirit will come and do the rest one of the ways we partner with the invisible world is when we open our mind to the thoughts that come into our mind and sometimes they come from God and sometimes they may come from the enemy when you open your mind to the thoughts that come from God's Word it activates the Spirit of God and the Holy Spirit comes and he begins to do the rest the Word of God opens the door for the Holy Spirit but I want you to see something on the contrary there was a disciple of Jesus whose name was Judas he was also very close connected to Jesus physically like the mother of Jesus she was his mother but Judas was his close disciple and if you can put up the verses where it says in John chapter 3 13 verse 2 that the devil put into the heart of Judas to betray Jesus so Satan comes first and puts it into the heart and mind of Judas to betray Jesus I don't think Judas knew it was the devil Judas just thought he got a brilliant idea to make some money by selling Jesus to Pharisees and he acts on that and then we see 25 verses later and the devil entered into Judas whatever you open your mind to you must understand the thoughts that come and stay in your mind they are not innocent they have someone that sends them and that who sends them does not send them just to make you distracted confused or depressed he sends them because he needs a door through which he can enter inside of you see the thought that came into Judas mind to betray Jesus it wasn't just a thought to help him make money it was a thought to help Satan find a foothold and possess Judas life when an angel came to Mary and said that do you want to be a person who's gonna bring the king of Israel on the scene she said yes this wasn't just so she will birth a baby this was so she can open the door for the Holy Spirit to come and do the impossible when you partner with demons you will do the unthinkable when you partner with the Holy Spirit you will do the impossible when you partner with demons you will do the unthinkable you will do things that you will look at yourself and say how could I have done this I, I, I'm not capable of doing this oh you're capable of doing a lot worse if you partner with the wrong power I have promised I will never do this I have promised I will never look at this yes you made a lot of promises but if you partner with the demon you will do the unthinkable if you partner with the Holy Spirit there was always going to be impossible that will mark your life can somebody say amen there was one one minister actually who was already preaching he wasn't a pastor he was preaching but he struggled with smoking he prayed that the smoking addiction will end he prayed and prayed and he seemed like God wasn't delivering him as he thought 
until after one service he was walking from the church and to his great amazement God opened his spiritual eyes and he saw on, on wires on electric wires two demons sitting on the top and he became you know aware of the fact that these were demons and somehow he knew that this is not just you know people well people don't sit on, on electrical wires but it, these were demons and as he's walking by he's looking with one eye over there and he's hearing them talk and they whisper and one is hitting another one and says oh man we are in trouble this man is coming from a church it's bad bad day for us and the other one pushed him he said don't worry I got him hooked he said how did you get him hooked he said look watch this I pull a string and we'll see what he will do and he, as he's walking he's seeing a demon pull a string as a demon pulls a string in that very instant he has an obsessive desire to smoke like he always did an urge to smoke which he thought was just a natural response to a person who's addicted except now he sees into spiritual world that the urge to smoke has someone behind it in that instant the urge to smoke was so strong he actually reached for a smoke but the revelation that this urge does not come from him but it comes from satan hit him stronger he looked in that place he said i rebuke you devil and he started going toward that electric wire and that image was gone and he never smoked ever again in his life the point is not to condemn anybody here who's smoking smoking is not good for you if god would want you to smoke he'd build a chimney, chimney on the top of your head and that would be the case but the point is this is that the feelings and the thoughts many times we get in our mind we're all convinced they're mine we're all convinced they're just innocent and naive but we read from Judas and we see even from Mary when God puts a thought inside of you when demons put a thought inside of you it's so they eventually can get a foothold in your life and do what they want to do can someone say amen and today we're going to just in a few moments I want to share with you practically three things I just kind of write them down and then we are going to pray and how to keep these thoughts from God these words from God a reality in our life the first thing is you conceive as you speak what you believe you conceive as you speak what you believe most of us we have good thoughts and good promises of God coming our way but many times they don't stay Jesus said in Matthew 13 he said that when the sower went out to sow one out of four seeds of soils only bore fruit and the rest of the soils didn't bear any fruit and sometimes that's what happens with us is when we hear a good promise when we get a dream we get inspired we get a goal and we run with it for a few weeks for a few days and after that it quickly withers away when we finally believe that God can use me when we finally believe everything can be great and then after some time things go away and this is what usually happens I want us to learn from Mary when the angel came and told Mary that Mary you're going to be a mother of a great king and this is going to happen supernaturally Mary couldn't process everything and she asked the questions but after she's done asking the questions she spoke with her mouth she said let it be to me not according to the natural law of the world which is a woman can only receive a child if she has a relationship with the man let it be to me not according to what I've seen because I've never seen this and this is not possible let it be to me according to what you said the way God's word gets deeply planted inside of your mind is if you start speaking according to God's word now let me make a small correction that helped me personally quoting the Bible is not necessary because most of you do not go 24 hours quoting scriptures you can't even if you know the scriptures a lot of people this is what they do they feel like agreeing with God's word means having an answer for every dilemma in life by quoting a scripture it means saying especially with the King James for I am with thee wherever thou goest 
Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table. And many people feel like if I memorize a lot of scripture and I quote exactly with the comma, with the apostrophe, that that's what it means to speak God's word and that's how it gets planted. Now that is good. But most of us, that's not how it's going to happen. Speaking according to God's word is like this. You're sick and someone comes to say, are you still struggling with that? According to God's word is not necessarily saying, oh no, I am completely fine. By his stripes I am healed. Now you will be a religious fanatic and people will look at you and say, stripes what? Who? And then you died a few days later. That is not going to bring the glory to Jesus because many people think that if you have great faith you have to ignore all the symptoms and you have to walk around saying you're healed and when you have pain. Now if God gives you a specific word or revelation of rhema that is true but for us as Christians speaking according to God's word when you're sick is when people ask you are you sick and you say I still have pain in my body but I'm a healthy person fighting sickness. God is on my side and everything is going to be wonderful. You say but that's not written in the Bible but that is according to God's word because it lines up with God's promises. Most of us will not be going around our day quoting always Isaiah or Jeremiah or Philippines or Ephesians but most of us because we don't quote the scriptures we give ourselves permission we say well since I don't quote them I'm just gonna say whatever I want to say no you have to say things according to God's word that means you bring your speech to alignment with God's word it doesn't have to be exact phrases and quotes from King James but the spirit of the scriptures has to be the spirit of your speech your speech pattern has to be the one that's packed and supercharged with positivity otherwise it's not lined up with the promises of God the Bible says let the weak say the Bible says let the poor say that means not necessarily that you quote the scriptures it just simply means you align your speech pattern not with what you feel but what you believe not with what you see but what you know you align your speech pattern with what God has said instead of what you went through from the beginning God has demonstrated the words play a significant role in the life of a person he created this world not with sweat not with efforts not with his hands but he created it with his mouth when he started to work with men one of the first things that he would do is he would change their name because one word that is repeated all the time it is your name in the house and God wanted people's names to be changed God called Jesus the Word of God. It's the Word of God that changes us. We see in many, many instances where the Word of God is so, so important. The words that you speak are like seeds that you plant every single time in your life. Most of us use our mouth to describe our situation. Some of us can use our mouth to change it. If you have a thermometer, a ther thermostat in your house, these two have a very different change. A thermometer reflects the temperature of your environment and thermostat changes the temperature of your house. If you walk into a house and it's 60 degrees or, or right now maybe it's 45 degrees, it's freezing cold. And if you have a thermostat in your house, you walk boldly without any fear. You punch a number 75 or 80. And you know within a few hours, the temperature in the house is going to quickly change. It will take a few hours, it's not going to happen right away but the temperature will change. Why? Because the thermostat, it changes the atmosphere and the temperature in the house. That's how your words are. Many people's words in the house are always like a thermometer. They always tell you what they feel. I feel tired, I feel sick, I'm going to quit my job, this person doesn't love me, this person, this person, this person, that person, that person and you always, your words are thermometer. They always describe your situation when your same words can change your situation. You can walk 
during the day even the doctors have tried this on the patients where they will tell a patient who's recovering from a disease if you walk around the house and you tell yourself that you're feeling better that everything is going to be good everything will work for your good and after a while they will see patients body recuperate and recover faster than those who walk around saying I'm fat I'm loser nothing ever works for me I remember once we were meeting with this couple, uh, me and my wife actually, it was with the wife first. I met with the husband earlier and we were meeting with the wife and just encouraging their marriage and we were talking a little bit about how to in marriage, um, you know, use proper words when addressing your spouse. And as we were talking and this, this you know, wonderful person who is with us tonight um, said, this is so true, so right, I'm going to change, you know, how I talk about my husband and to my husband. And lo and behold, the husband calls at that very moment. And you know this phrase that we use in our culture? Speak of the devil. <laughs> and this wonderful wife looks at the phone. Her husband is calling. And we just talked about speaking good things to the husband and about the husband. She looks at his name and his picture and she said, speak of the devil. I was like, why is the devil calling you? She said, no, it's my husband. I was like, didn't we just talk about not speaking or calling him the devil because he's going to act like the devil? He's like, well, it's just the saying. I'm like, it still works. It's like coming, setting up a temperature 75 in your house and say, it's just a the thermostat. It still changes the temperature in your house even if it's just a saying. If you keep calling him the devil, don't be surprised if he acts like one. If you keep calling yourself, I'm worthless, fat, nobody, good to nothing, I will never amount to anything. Don't be surprised if your income begins to bear fruits of your words. If you want to change your world, if you want the promises of God to stick, then what you do is you speak. You change your confession. You don't call your spouse the devil. You don't call your children demons. And you just simply speak according to the promises of God. Can somebody say amen? Let's quickly check point number two. Don't let Joseph abort your baby. Don't let Joseph abort your baby. When Mary receives the word from the angel, she says, let it be according to your will. She confirms with her words the word of God. And then she comes to Joseph. And so Joseph... I am pregnant and I promise it's from God and Joseph is like yeah I've heard that before <laughs> this is not a first time that this has happened I actually had a true story of similar case when I had a person sitting in my office no exaggeration and he had um, a person who was pregnant they were getting married and he met with me and uh and I said, hey, how did it happen? You guys getting married? That's so awesome. And he's like, Pastor Vlad, I just want to tell you two things. I wanted to be clear straight up, two things. And I said, please go ahead. He said, number one, me and my girlfriend made a decision. We will not have sex until we get married. I was like, great. He said, but then we also made a second decision. We want to have a baby before we get married. And I was like, through adoption? No. And I'm sitting there like an idiot. I'm trying to understand how is that possible first and the second at the same time. And he has the audacity and this is a person who has education who is very smart who looks at me and he says we have accomplished both of them at the same time and I said that and I was like bro I do not have spiritual discernment to understand the depth and complexity of your situation I'm just gonna pray for you that God will open your mind and bless your baby and your wife and everything all together but stuff like that happens so I want you to imagine, please, I know that it's easy for us to sit and judge Joseph right now because Joseph, you know, he didn't understand. But imagine you being Joseph and the little girl you're engaged to comes and says, trust me, it's from God. Really? Come on, at least admit it and repent and let's move forward. No, it's from God. What would you do? You don't have a proof. There is no video surveillance, video camera to prove the angel spoke to you. There is no audio recording. There is no pictures. Nobody saw an angel talking to you. It's only your word against his and you're a woman and that culture, your word means nothing. Here's one way we can fix this. Get rid of the baby. We will move forward with the wedding. 
what if angel didn't speak to me what if all of that is just a hallucination what if it's just it's just been crazy and Mary here has a second thing too she just spoke the word it just got confirmed she conceived and here comes the second step it's when your situation will question your revelation when whenever you believe starts questioning starts being questioned by the things you're facing in your life whatever you're hoping for begins to be challenged you've set a goal you're running with it you said I'm gonna start changing the way I speak I'm gonna start changing the way I think and then comes Joseph and Joseph is to throw you off and Mary does not abort the baby Mary holds on Mary says I will not quit and Joseph plans to leave her and she knows this is going to be bad this could end up in my death but I'm not going to give up what God has started you know same thing happened to Judas when Satan placed in Judas's mind to betray Jesus and Judas agreed with it but then came the test some of us don't see that as a test but Judas was convinced Jesus was bad Jesus was worth selling Jesus wasn't worth more than 30 shekels and here is the very Jesus he's convinced inside is worth to sell this Jesus comes to Judas takes his sandals and begins to wash his feet this is a hit an inside pregnancy this is a chance for Judas to quit thinking like he was thinking about Jesus this is a moment to know Jesus is not a fool he knows what you're planning against him and he's still touching your feet he is not squishing them he is not pinching them he is touching them softly to let you know Judas abort the negativity you have inside I'm not that bad I'm not against you what did I do to you Judas I love you I am for you and sometimes the enemy will throw bad things in your life to put a question mark on the revelation and the destiny that you have inside of you but God will do the same when the enemy has something inside of you that you're convinced you will never amount to anything and God will give you good things in life just to mess with that and shake that up so you will abort and give up every negative mindset in your head and say God is good and I'm gonna trust him can somebody say amen put your hands together for Jesus Christ the Bible says it's the goodness of God that leads men to repentance I've seen people who don't believe completely not believe and God will completely surprise them just for one thing so they will give up and say God you are good and from now on I'm gonna believe in you don't give up when Joseph challenges you do not surrender when challenges come your way I remember in the beginning of the year when me and my wife made a decision to give this it was a very big number uh, of money to one ministry we gave this decision to give a very big number for first three four months and then we decided to take it a little bit lower that money was supposed to come from one of my rentals some of you know rentals in Tri-Cities were doing really good 98 to 97 percent of occupancy which means that if you put a place for rent it will be rented like this I remodeled the duplex kept the same price for this particular unit one month goes I can't find rent but I need to pay that money that I promised second month goes and I can't find rent third month goes and I can't find rent I remember I was wiring that money through Walmart I was standing in Walmart line waiting for that little check thing to send the money overseas to the missions and I have these thoughts in my mind literally from the devil saying you are losing your mind you are crazy this is not gonna work you are insane what are you doing literally it just seemed like give up quit this is not for you this will never work and I stood there in Walmart I remember it like yesterday I closed my eyes and I said God I'm not sure whether I'm what I'm doing is right maybe I misheard you but if I'm gonna be a fool I'm gonna be a fool that trusts you if I'm gonna go broke because of this let it be known I did it because I dared to trust you and from now on God you do whatever you do but I make up my mind no abortion I'm not gonna quit and within a few weeks I found rent and the surprising part is that 
I had a trip right away planned where I was speaking at one place. It was one youth group that invited me and my wife, paid for both of our tickets, which if you know anything about traveling on the other side of the United States, it's a lot of money. If it's a small youth group, if they cover for your tickets, that's huge. And after the trip, when we left, uh, the youth group came and they said, we wanted to bless you. They did not know what was going through, what I was going through. And I've never had this in my life where somebody handed me $3,000. And I remember I, we opened that check in the airport and both of us start crying. Because in that Walmart, when those thoughts came, I was this close to leave and say, you know what, I, I'm going to do it when everything is works out. But little did I know, as God was just preparing me and testing me inside, just like he did Mary and he will do to you. When you believe in the dream, you will have the Joseph situation. What everything will seem like, if you just give up this, everything will be fine. Nothing will be fine if you give up. Everything will be fine if you don't. And if you do what Mary did and she says, I won't give up and it's amazing. Few months later, Joseph gets a revelation. It will be amazing how God will quickly change the Josephs in your life. The situations in your life to match to the revelation you have inside of you. God will change your situation. Can somebody say amen? If you are sick in your body and maybe today you say, I give up on the whole idea. I prayed once, prayed second time. I knew God is not going to heal me. No, 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 no. Hold on to the truth inside of you. God is on my side. He is my healer. He will help me and it's a matter of time and God will line up your situation with your revelation. Can somebody say amen? amen. And the third thing, we're going to come to prayer. Surround yourself with pregnant people. When Mary was pregnant and the angel told her, Joseph is not understanding you. I want you to go to Elizabeth. She's also pregnant. She has a similar story to yours. She couldn't have kids. I want you to be with her and as you are with her, you will get through this hard time. Let me tell you how to get through hard times in life. It's not to have the best devotional Bible you can find in Christian bookstore. It's not even to have good podcasts. Let me tell you how to get through hard time in your marriage and in your finances. You gotta find some pregnant people. You gotta find people who may not be your age, your skin color and your upbringing but they have the same thing inside of them as you have inside of you. They may have an accent but they have the same attitude. They may have a different skin color but they said that they have the same dreams and the same determination and if you surround yourself with pregnant people you will get through and not die when things are hard. Can somebody say amen? The Bible says bad company corrupts good, hab good habit. You know what that means? Bad company kills dreams. Bad company kills goals. You can have great goals Bible says clearly don't be misled don't think just because a dream is good and because you are good then whoever you surround yourself with it doesn't matter Bible says don't be a fool bad company it kills dreams that's why the angel knew that and he tells Mary find yourself at Elizabeth because what you're going through is gonna get a little bit rough but if you find yourself Elizabeth you're gonna get through this and whatever you have inside will be delivered and that you will have a great miracle in your life. Judas also had a company. Judas found himself pregnant people. You know who were those people? Pharisees who had the same demons as Judas had. Jesus is eating a supper and Judas is there but he's with the clock because Judas has another supper. Judas has another party and this wasn't a party that Judas was supposed to bring people to God. This was a party with Pharisees and he's waiting. Okay Jesus give us the bread. Come on quickly hurry up. Give us the, give us the juice. We gotta go. We gotta go and everything is done and Jesus continues all of these revelations and guess what is Judas with the pregnant people who have the same thing as he has and very soon he does, his dreams become a reality his dreams that destroy his life your dreams are a reality not because you're brilliant and smart it's because you're surrounded with people who are can somebody say amen I think it was Kirk Franklin who said the following that really touched me he said I was raised with no father bad neighborhood high school dropout foot stamps etc you know what saved me 
mentoring. Two years ago, I remember sitting and by the gym during our chill night with one couple who was living together and dating. Dating and living together. They had a child and I was encouraged them with my wife to get married. I was like, hey, you guys are already living like married? How hard is it? It's going to be easy. Just get a marriage certificate, get married. You will have no guilt, no shame and just your relationship will really be solid. And this girl just jumps back at me and she said, everyone around me is divorced. My parents are, his parents are, all of my friends and everyone in the community is divorced and I'm afraid to get married. She said 75 percent, statistics says 75 percent of people are divorced. I was like, that high? I didn't know it was that high. She said, I'm scared. I said, it's funny how you're not scared to sin and go to hell but you're scared to, to get married. As we continue to talk, I asked her, it's interesting that we go, because she was going at the time to our church, lovely people. I said, it's interesting that you actually come to the same church we live in the same tri-cities. You think everyone is getting divorced. And I cannot for the life of me know one person who is. Like my parents are married. My pastor is married. One uncle, Leon Larissa is married. Koist and Natasha. Stefan and Galina. Erin and Tatiana. Ilya and Mariana. I was like, for the life of me, I cannot think of one person who's divorced. She's like, well, it's maybe in your world. And I was like, who? rejected you from that world and did you know I said Dr. Phil said I had to use Dr. Phil not prophet Isaiah I said you know what the Dr. Phil said that if a couple prays together and goes to church together just do these two things just these two things that they have a divorce chance one in ten thousand she said that's not possible I was like huh you didn't know that and here she sits and her fear starts to crumble and what I realized with this young lady all of her fears and all of her ideas was not because people were getting divorced it's that she was in that company and you know what the bad thing would be if she is to get married she will get divorced if she will change her surrounding she will not get divorced and the best part she won't be miserable in her marriage it's not about the society it's about your society it's about your soul call of friends if all of your friends are divorced you will be too if they are all broke cussing addicted potheads not want to do anything in life if that's their friends unless you're there to lift them up but if it's your comfort zone I have a bad news for you today you surrounded yourself with pregnant people and you're going to deliver exactly what they're delivering and God wants you to know one thing you got to surround yourself with the new surrounding if you want dreams to become a life in this coming year the way you overcome is you change what you speak you stand strong when things are hard and you change your surrounding and God will help you can somebody say amen